Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have a Ryzen 7 3800X processor. Firstly, let's talk about why it's quite underrated, then we'll proceed to our testing. But before we have a look at it, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can make more videos. Also, comment down below if you have any suggestions. When the third gen Ryzen processors were introduced back in 2019, there were a lot of reviews about them, except the 3800X. The main problem at first was the MSRP. At $399, it was $70 more expensive than the 3700X, but they were quite similar in specs. Also, if you were considering spending $399, you might just as well go with the 3900X, which has 12 cores and 24 threads. As a result, most reviews were either about the 3700X or the 3900X, and the consensus was not to spend the premium for the 3800. However, the price difference nowadays is only $40, and you can actually get the 3800X for cheaper than a 3700X when it's on sale. And that's exactly what I did. It also comes with 3 months of Xbox Game Pass. The 3800X has 8 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 3.9GHz, a boost clock of 4.5GHz, and a whopping 36MB of cache. It comes with a Wraith RGB cooler, and it has a TDP of 105 watts. I won't be using that cooler though, instead I have a Noctua NHD 15. It also supports PCIe 4.0, provided you have an X570 or a B550 motherboard. It'll work with most AM4 motherboards as well, but your mileage may vary. I'm able to reach that boost clock on a single core, and around 4.2GHz on all cores. You probably know this already, but it doesn't have an integrated GPU. It's also unlocked, and we'll talk about overclocking later. Here's another issue with the 3800X. The 3700X is mainly competing with the i7-9700K from Intel, and the 3900X is mainly competing with the i9-9900K. The 3800X doesn't really have an Intel counterpart. In fact, it's basically just a bin 3700X with a higher TDP. Nevertheless, we'll compare it with a 9700K and a 9900K, as well as a 3700X and a 3900X. Our build for today is a Ryzen 7 3800X, an X570 Aorus Master from Gigabyte, two sticks of 16GB DDR4 3200MHz RAM from XPG, a Radeon 7, and the infamous Intel 660P SSD. So, if you're building a computer in 2020, should you consider a 3800X? All of our CPUs except the 3900X have 8 cores, while the 3900X has 12 cores. The 9700K has 8 threads, the 3700X, 3800X, and the 9900K have 16 threads, and the 3900X have 24 threads. They all have base clocks under 4GHz, and they have varying boost clocks between 4.4GHz and 5GHz. In general, AMD processors tend to have lower boost clocks than their Intel counterparts. On the other hand, AMD processors have an advantage when it comes to cache. TDPs are quite similar, but Intel measures them at base clock, while AMD does so at their boost clock. One last thing before we start benchmarking, let's look at prices. MSRPs aren't really relevant at this point, as it's been a while since they all got released. We see that the Ryzen 7 CPUs are cheaper than the 9700K, and the Ryzen 9 3900X is cheaper than the 9900K. And with this, let's move to the benchmarks, and let's start with Cinebench. Looking at these values, we see that the 3800X is 2-4% faster than the 3700X. On the other hand, we see that AMD and Intel are pretty much tied when it comes to single-core performance, but AMD is significantly better when it comes to multi-core. The 9900K costs 25% more than the 3800X, but they're pretty much tied when it comes to multi-core Cinebench. By the way, the 3900X just sweeps the floor with the 9900K. 45% difference in Cinebench 20 multi-core? Wow! There's a new i9-10900K on the market, but I wasn't able to test it out. Now that we're done with Cinebench, let's move on to 3 d Mark. Here, both the 3700X and the 3800X perform around 20% better than the 9700K, but there is little to no difference between those two processors. We see similar results in Firestrike. In PC Mark 10 Extended, we see a completely different story. While the 3800 pulls ahead of the 9700K in digital content creation, it falls behind in productivity and essentials. We don't see a big difference between the AMD processors, while the 9900K pulls ahead of the rest. Looking at 7-zip benchmarks, while we see AMD pulling away again, we don't see much of a difference between the 3700X and the 3800X. This is just another test where the 3900X performs much better than the rest of our stack. Export times in Premiere are very important to me. Here, we have an 8-minute 4K H.264 video with an audio track and a bunch of effects, exported in 4K YouTube preset. Premiere heavily relies on the CPU, but GPU acceleration is also on. The results are quite close to one another, and thanks to QuickSync, Intel can catch up with AMD in this. Moving on, we converted a 1GB H.264 4K video to a 1080p MP4 in Handbrake. Handbrake can take advantage of multiple threads and shows. While the 9900K and the 3700X perform very similarly, the 3900X pulls ahead and finishes the conversion around 20 seconds faster than the rest of our stack. The 3800X performs slightly better than the 3700X. Moving on to gaming, let's start with CSGO. I don't know why CSGO is so popular for benchmarks, but we'll use it anyway. As we're benchmarking the CPU, we'll go with 1080p. 
We're using a Radeon 7 as that's the best card I have at the moment. That being said, this is the first time I see AMD beating Intel in CSGO, a game that heavily favors Intel. As you probably expected, the 3700X and the 3800X perform very similarly. In Formula 1 2018, we see that the 9900K performs better than the rest while the 9700K is behind the AMD processors. There's a 5% difference in performance between the 3700X and the 3800X. This game isn't well optimized for multiple threads, and as a result, we see that the 3900X is performing worse than the 3800X. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we'll see that the Intel processors are performing worse than our AMD processors. On the other hand, all of our AMD processors perform very similarly. GTA 5 also favors Intel in general, but the results we get are very similar. The 3800X performs better than the 3900X in this game as well. It's a similar situation for Doom. Our Intel processors perform worse than the AMD processors, and the Ryzen 7s are very similar in performance. Looking at Hitman 2, we see a completely different situation. Our Intel systems perform around 30% better than our AMD ones. This is the only game where the performance difference actually matters. Our AMD CPUs have a 1% low of around 60 FPS in this game, which you will actually notice if you have a higher refresh rate monitor. Oh, and the 3800X performed 2% better than the 3700X. When you compare the 3rd gen Ryzen CPUs with their Intel counterparts, you'll see that they perform better in most scenarios. Among the Ryzens, we saw that the Ryzen 9 3900X performs significantly better than the Ryzen 7s, while there is little to no difference between the 3700X and the 3800X. To be fair, a 3800X is basically a bin 3700X with a higher TDP, which might actually be a deal breaker for some people. This all explains why there aren't a lot of reviews about the 3800X, but I found one for cheaper than a 3700X, so here I am. I use Ryzen Master to see how much I can overclock it, but Zen 2 CPUs don't have much room for overclocking. I've seen people overclocking their 3800X to 4.5GHz, but it didn't work for me. So I tried 4.45GHz, and at first, I thought it worked. I got around 5600 from Cinebench R20 Multi, which was around 10% better than stock. However, it wasn't stable. I finally managed to get it to run stable at 4.4GHz, but it was at 1.4V, which is quite high in my opinion. Moreover, I didn't get much of a performance increase, and in my opinion, Precision Boost Overdrive seems to work well. I have two sticks of 3200MHz RAM, but I wasn't lucky there either, as any attempt at overclocking caused a blue screen. Using an Noctua D15 cooler, it idles at around 38 degrees and goes up to 75 under load. And when overclocked, it goes up to low 80s. Overall, the 3800X is in no way a bad CPU, but an unlucky one. At launch, it really wasn't worth the extra $70, and even now, I wouldn't pay the extra $40. You can upgrade your RAM with that money, and it would have a bigger impact on performance than upgrading to a 3800X. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribing to my channel. Comment down below if you have any suggestions. Take care.